what is the best way to gain muscle mass? So, you know, as, as you said correctly, it's a massive mixed bag. Um, you know, there's different positions and each position also needs to have the flexibility to move into other roles as well. So, you know, the short and tall of it is there is no one ideal physique for an AFL athlete, which is actually in contrast to a lot of other sports. If you think about um, basketballers, they're pretty homogenous, really. Um, you know, you're talking about tall guys with long arm spans, okay? You're talking about track sprinters, a uh, 100-metre sprint. You, you know, you're talking about generally pretty muscular, especially in the legs. Um, if you're talking about marathon runners, across the board, you know, like elite marathon runners are going to be small, energy efficient, very light, very slim. Um, and, uh, you know, as you've alluded to, AFL demands all those things from a single athlete. Um, so to be the best uh, and to be an ideal AFL athlete, you've really got to be uh, a jack of all trades, really, don't you? How do you go about uh, educating them that, you know, we don't want to put on that all that muscle all that quickly? Like you mentioned, it needs to be gradual um, for it to be functional and to, and to prevent uh, injuries or, or to lose their running game. Every individual is different and the rate that every individual, um, you know, will gain muscle mass uh varies greatly so again you have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis with each athlete and set realistic goals uh, you know for that athlete based on their progress um, the other thing i like to do with body composition is body composition in and of itself like so um, we do skin folds and dexa for example it's really important to remember that it's not a performance measurement so we use it to track changes and look at whether or not our interventions are um, effective or not and you know whether or not that muscle mass is increasing or the body fat's decreasing but we want to look at it in the context of the rest of the athlete's uh, preparation uh, some clubs from rumors i don't know if it's whispers or not but apparently have not done skin folds before what's your take on on skin folds um so i believe the the issue of late and pro pips actually better position to talk about this than i am but um that the, at the combine we've stopped doing uh, skin folds as a one-off measure and that's because as a as i said it's not a performance measure um it's actually a tool to track change over time so a single measurement at one time isn't really relevant like this you know you, you could take skin folds of 100 people some people have got just thicker skin mm. you know what i mean so it's not really correct to compare one individual to another um you know at a, at a single time point if that makes sense yeah. So I'm not sure about how other clubs are using it on a day-to-day. -day. Like we use it as a tool to track change over time within an individual. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And it's important to educate the players around that. As you said, it can be very confronting and uncomfortable. And it's important for them to know that, look, we're not, um, we're doing this, you know, to see if our intervention is uh, having the effect, having the desired effect and to then inform our future interventions. Um, it's not a contest to see who in the list has the lowest skin folds. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there's, yeah. there's no prizes for that. Um, yeah, and so trying to, you know, it's a constant battle, trying to educate, um, yeah, educate the boys around that and, and some of the staff as well. And, and on that note, what, what are some common mistakes you've found working uh, with athletes um, when it comes to body composition being the focus? Um, so obviously the primary mistake is what I just said, like people competing with each other and trying to get the, the lowest possible skin folds when that's not necessarily what they need for their game mm -hmm. uh, and for their performance at that point in time. Yeah. In terms of mistakes around um, dieting, I mean, you know, there's thousands. But obviously the, the biggest one is um, you know, guys under eating calories and trying to starve themselves to get their skin folds down. Or, or worse, you, you know, like um, what we want to do to get your skin folds down is to eat a, a good quality, uh, nutrient rich diet that's, um, you know, got all the micronutrients that we need and, and uh, all the protein and everything to support and, and um, the carbohydrates around training so that you're not impacting your training, try and drop your skin folds because that's a self defeating, you know, task. What's the point of dropping your skin folds if you can't train as hard? Um, 